Greetings, true believers and spider friends alike. I am Dan Slott, current writer and yarn spinner for Marvel Comics' The Amazing Spider-Man. With that power, I have a great responsibility to declare the Big Damn Spider Month officially open. Matt and Chris, two swell guys with sexy faces and, like, totally real muscles, are here to celebrate Spider-Man Homecoming's release all month long with their massive uber fan brains and did I mention they're totally real muscles. So sit back, relax, and let the big damn boys flip all over you. I'm not saying this. This is terrible. I I've given you an intro. That's more than enough. Mm, all right. Fair enough. You can go now, Mr. Slot. My dog. Will you give me back my dog? Will you reveal what's going to happen with Spidey in Marvel Legacy? Uh, I, I don't know if I can do that. Oh, dear. Then I suppose... In the doghouse, they must remain. <laughs> you fiends! You big damn fiends! <laughs> Get the mayonnaise! <laughs> Welcome to Big Damn Love! More specifically, welcome to Big Damn Spider Month, which will kick off good and proper in just a minute. Oh, I still haven't chosen a game to talk about. I've got so many of them. Let's see. Um, uh, no. Aha! There we go! It's one of my favourite games growing up. Perfect! Right, we've got an episode. Hello? Don't you dare. What? Don't you flippin' well dare. Cadicarus of the hugely successful YouTube channel Cadicarus. What on earth are you on about? I already video essayed the web spinning shit out of Spider-Man for the PS1 this month. Well, last month. I got there first, so I have dibs. It's too soon. You need to pick something else. Fine. Um. Aha! Nah, I got dibs on that one too. Aha! This video's already two minutes in. Do you really think you have the time to do that game justice? Yeah. Uh. No. 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 Meh. Huh? That one wasn't even a game. Look, how the hecketing, hecking, heckington can you see what I'm doing? Oh, I can always see what you're doing. Always? Always. Like, always, always. Go on! Okay, that one's cool. Have fun with the rest of the video. What a freak! Always watch. Back at the start of the millennium, Marvel Comics decided to begin a new line of books set in their own universe, free from decades of continuity. The plan was to hook new readers in with characters they loved, yet none of the baggage. A fresh start to retell origin stories and firmly place these new beginnings in the 21st century. The first character to get the ultimate Marvel treatment? Spider-Man. Well, obviously, he's Marvel's biggest name and most recognisable brand. Take Peter Parker's lovable, relatable style, bring his story out of the 60s and into the modern day of the year 2000 with our hip-hop and our mini-discs and our techno the robotic puppy. Written by Brian Michael Bendis and illustrated for the first long stretch by Mark Bagley, Ultimate Spider-Man quickly became a bestseller and ran continuously for over a decade. But we're not here to talk about the comic too much. Although I totally shall one day because it's the first book that I religiously picked up from the beginning to the end. Plus it'd be great to talk about the introduction of Miles Morales into the Marvel Universe. First in the Ultimate Universe and then in the 616 itself. Not only that, the horrific way that some of the villains' origins are retold. The excellent writing by Brian Michael Bendis. And the fact that 14 year old me had a huge crush on Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson from this book. What? What? No, today we're here to discuss the first outing for this book outside of print, 2005's Ultimate Spider-Man The Video Game. Developed by Treyarch, 
Treyarch, and published by Activision, the game was the first follow-up to the previous year's hugely successful and technically groundbreaking Spider-Man 2, based on the excellent movie of the same name. More about that one in a fortnight. Since it'd be a while before they could sequelize that particular branch of the license, it was a no-brainer to make another Spidey title, and what better way to do it than by adapting one of the most popular and relevant versions of the character. Ten minutes there, kick the rhino guy in the ding-ding, and ten minutes to get back. You can do that with your mask on backwards. They made a smart decision in hiring Brian Michael Bendis himself to write the story and script for the game, meaning that it would fit comfortably with the tone of the comic book series it was based on, but also came with the perk that he would create an in-continuity brand new story just for the game. If you were a reader of the series and a gamer, this was one heck of a chance to see the book you loved on the small screen, experience it for yourself, and take control of Spider-Man. But not just Spider-Man. A sequel to the 2003 storyline Venom, the game gives you the chance to play as both Spidey and the returning Eddie Brock, possessed by a ravenous symbiotic life form that needs to constantly feed to stay alive. Meaning that, yeah, sometimes you're Spidey, but when you're playing as Venom, you had to constantly replenish your life force. That meant you had to absorb and drain the life from your opponents, random passers-by. As horrifying as it could be to refill your health bar with the life energy of an innocent person, the first one you try it out on is surprisingly satisfying. <laughs> Take that, annoying Spider-Man 2 side quest! Now, where's the pizza delivery store? See, in the Ultimate Universe, the Venom Suit is a man-made medicinal mishap created by Peter and Eddie's scientist papas many years ago as an attempted cure-all for every known disease. The perverted parasite had been bonded to Parker and Brock and was now yours to command, as you got to play as both Spider-Man and Venom for the first time in a Spider-Man game since 1994's Maximum Carnage. Playing as both the goody and the baddie means boss fights with folk from all sides of the story. You go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Electro, the Green Goblin, Silver Sable, the Rhino, Herman the Shocker Schultz, Beetle, Wolverine... You don't say. And all as part of a sprawling story that covers MJ trying to console Peter over the guilt he feels for Eddie's predicament, Trask Industries attempting to obtain the Venom suit for their own sinister purposes, and international espionage by a mysterious Latverian agent. The control scheme is pretty similar to Spider-Man 2, but with a bigger emphasis on web zipping and jumping as opposed to just swinging. Sure, the swinging's still here, but with half of the game taking place on the Queen's side of the Queensboro Bridge, you've got to get used to traversing without the aid of huge skyscrapers all the time. Getting around is still a whole load of fun, especially with Venom's preferred method of travel, gigantic leaps and bounds that remind me a great deal of the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction, which came out earlier that same year. The combat's what you'd come to expect from a Spidey game by then, light attacks, heavy attacks, web combos, and the side missions are similar to that of the previous game, usually featuring a random mugging, or a citizen doing something stupid with little to no explanation for it. You're the bestest! And you're the worstest! Why are you <laughs> hanging from a flagpole? The story intertwines with the two leads. Each has their own motivation. Brock is on a hungry rampage to find Peter and get answers about the suit, whilst Old Webhead is trying to track down Eddie and investigate the Beatles' break-ins behind Nick Fury's back. It's paced like a TV miniseries, with both story strands having equal screen time. The supporting cast is big and full of Easter eggs and nods to stories past and yet to come. And although he doesn't appear on screen in the game, J. Jonah Jameson's scenery-chewing legacy is very much covered. Jameson's gonna chew my butt if I don't go to the Daily Bugle. Maybe not the right bit of scenery to chew there, JJ. I'm a little nauseous, yeah. I was so delighted when the title arrived on PlayStation 2 nearly 12 years ago! What? Where's the time gone? And it still holds up today. If you want to track it down for yourself, it's available on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox, PC, and there were even versions made for the Nintendo DS, an early DS game, and the Game Boy Advance. Although it was part of the canon upon release, Bendis adapted the story into War of the Symbiotes much later down the line in 2008, retroactively making Ultimate Spider-Man the video game an out-of-continuity adaptation 
of a future story arc. What? What? It's a must-buy if you enjoyed Spider-Man 2 the game, because it's a comic book stylized spin-off that captures the same spirit of the open world gameplay and expands upon it by adding a second character into the mix. The only downside is they didn't carry the tradition of adding Bruce Campbell into the game. So there you have it. I big damn love Ultimate Spider-Man the video game, so much so that it helped kick off our Big Damn Spider Month. Stick with us over the coming weeks because we've got some more web-slinging surprises, but if you don't mind, I've uh, got some alone time after this video, so I think another spin around New York City is in order for me. Now go and do that thing I like. <laughs> okay, in, in upcoming issues of uh, Amazing Spider-Man, you can expect to see uh, more smooching, which is American for snogging. So there you go. You'll 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 get that. <laughs> Just want my dog back. <laughs> he gets lonely. <laughs>